All right, I'm gonna give you a quick tutorial on how to paint one of these flags and also include a time-lapse video of it getting cut out. This one is an STL file. It's a 3D wavy flag. It's probably kind of hard to see, but this one's got some waves in it. This is just done out of three quarter inch birch plywood. So let's get started. This is very simple to paint. It's easy. You don't have to be neat at all. That's what I like about it. <clears throat> so we're going to start with black. We're just going to do these lines. You don't have to stay all the way in them. Anything that goes out just going to make it look a little bit more tattered. And you don't have to make the lines fully black either. You don't have to worry about if you have any wood showing, a little bit of wood showing, that's fine. Just go back and forth, fill it in a little bit. Just using black outdoor paint uh, for this. I use, I always use outdoor paint. I just seems a little bit more high quality to me. We have um, 2D files available also on our Etsy on Coughlin Creations. This same flag and some different versions and a whole bunch of other ones also in 2D. Also later on, we're gonna actually torch this flag to give it a leathered look. And I'll show you how I do that. I just buy cheap paint brushes. There's nothing uh, that you need to be special about the paint brushes or spend a lot of money on. And the reason I do these on three quarter inch birch is it's cheaper than hardwood and you're actually making it look tattered. So there's no point of using you know, oak or walnut. I've made probably a couple hundred of these since I've been 
uh, since I designed the original 2D file and this is my first 3D one. So I'm kind of excited about that. And this is the order I always paint into. You can see like there's some knots in here, but we're going to cover them up and so they don't really matter. These I've gotten so used to doing that it takes me about between 5 and 10 minutes to paint one when I do do them. Alright, so that's the black, and that's all we'll need for the black, and we're just going to move on to white here to do the stars in the 1776 outline. Same thing with the stars. Um, you don't really have to be too neat with it. Because again, we're just going to make this thing look old and ragged. We also have a flag bundle with every um, flag we offer. I believe it's 17 flags right now on our um, Etsy page. And this one we're going to add to it for a 3D file. So you can buy it individually or as a bundle.
And if you go outside these lines, you can just kind of take your finger or paper towel and so we're going to go over that with some blue anyway. So it really doesn't matter. I just like to kind of smooth it flat so it's not like huddled up. It doesn't take much paint on these flags. <clears throat> when I carved these, I used a quarter inch ball nose. To, and I actually used the for a finishing pass. I didn't do a roughing pass because it's soft wood, you know, plywood. And then I went back and selected all my lines in the 1776. <clears throat> and I used a 60 degree V bit do the rest, all the lines in the 1776 and the stars. So that's it. Um, for the stars here. I'm gonna grab a, some paint brushes here. Well, I just use these um, chip brushes, cheap chip brushes. You can buy a whole box of them at Harbor Freight, pretty cheap. This is all I use for these. Again, nothing special. So we're going to do the red now. We're going to actually, we're not going to paint everything all red we're going to leave some wood showing i just going to turn my brush here go in about halfway in between here between the holes here and these lines start with red and we're just gonna kind of brush kind of thick you want your paint a little bit thick no spots same thing we're gonna go to the next stripe Leaving some wood showing. Just kind of drag your brush. Skip every other one, obviously. Dip my paint in the wrong paint, of course, but we'll start here again. There's that knot. Um, I, it doesn't really even matter if that knot shows because it's supposed to look old and that's why I like painting these. You don't have to spend a lot of time on them. And they actually cut out pretty fast too, especially the 2D version. Just 
Now the reason we're leaving some bare spots is we want it to make it look old, but when we go back and burn this, it's going to darken up those wood spots and it's going to really make it look good. Again, you're just dragging this. Once you see your paint kind of start lightening up, you can dip your brush again and get most of the excess off and then start again. This was like my first flag design I've ever designed and it's done really well. I've sold a, a bunch of these and people seem to tend to like them a lot. And we're on our last row already. I like to take this as soon as I get done painting it. So the paint isn't all the way dry. And then start torching it because you get that paint that um, bubbles up and it really makes it look cool. Alright, so now we're on to white. <clears throat> this is just going to be the same process that we just did with the red, but with white. And it, it's going to kind of look funny right now when we just do it, but once we burn it is when it kind of comes alive and looks really nice and if you get some you know some white or red down in that black that's okay like I said, these are really easy to paint and they're not hard to make look good. It's just the process that you go through. Same thing, I got some paint that's kind of running down inside. I'm not going to worry about that. So we're going to make this thing look rough because that's how we want it to look. If you have time to follow me, I would very appreciate it because I'm just starting up my YouTube now. And I plan on doing some more tutorials like we have some, uh, some perpetual calendars that I design. They're pretty cool, gear driven. Um, they're also on our Etsy. And I want to do an assembly video on how to assemble them. So I'm going to keep shooting videos and see how it goes. So that's it for the white. Oh no, it's not. I got to do the 1776 still.
So now we just gotta do the blue. For the blue, I just use a foam brush, a little foam brush. And then I will take like a paper towel and just kind of get if there's any excess off. So we're gonna be going over that. And then when I do this, I take and get as much paint off as I can. You don't want like globs on the sides or anything like that. You just want to kind of get the brush coated. And then I just drag it. We'll do the same thing, dip it, get the paint off. Because what will happen is you'll end up getting puddles inside the stars. So I try to, if you just drag it flat, you should, should be okay. see that 1776 kind of starts to pop out once you go over it with blue And I just stop before I get to the red or white over here. Leave a little bit of a gap. And then we're actually going to burn in between there. I kind of like that look. You can customize this however you want. If you want this to be dark blue, solid, whatever you want to do. This is just how I like to do mine. But it's up to you. It'll be your flag once you make it. And how you want to paint it. I just like mine looking pretty rough and all that. You can go to shows and you see like a whole bunch of, you know, regular flags and, but you don't really see a lot of flags like this when you go. And I think that's why they do well because it's just something different that people can put, you know, in their office or in their garage or man cave or wherever. <clears throat> I just go back and maybe add a little bit of paint here and there to maybe get them stars to pop out a little bit better. Just blend this in. That's it. I mean, that's painted. So now I'm going to take it out to the garage and we're going to 
char this thing up and make it come alive. All right, we're out in the garage, and now it's time to torch this thing up. I'm just using this little uh, burns matic map gas I like to use because it burns hotter. But this is all you do. You take, you burn everything. So this paint's still wet, and it makes it bubble up real nice. And just go along. Make sure you hit the wood to kind of darken that up. See all that paint bubbling. Just kind of gives it a nice aged look. I don't hit every single piece of the paint because I want to make it look like some of it kind of stuck on over the years and Might them tips kind of tend to catch on fire sometimes, you just blow them out. My first YouTube video, so cut me some slack. I don't have the greatest cameras or. But I'm trying my best with what I got. And hit inside them stars to kind of give it some discolor. But I like to kind of burn inside too, them holes. Hit all these tips. I'm gonna darken up some of these wood spots in here. You don't kind of want anything light colored in this. Okay, if you get that char, it just makes it look a little bit more on. I just go back and check and make sure that I don't have any like really light spots showing on this. So that's it. I usually just use like a spray clear coat. You can see this thing smoking down here. I got a little hot, but that's okay. And that's it for that and then I'll give you uh, after I clear coat it I'll do like a nice uh, up close view and you can check it out Oops. 
There we go, right way. So this is the final version, I guess you'd say. This is what we end up with. You can see like all those burn marks. But that's it. I use a, I like to use a gloss finish. I just use a spray clear lacquer on it. And that's what you end up with. Uh, thank you and please subscribe.